Today, we are going to show you the setup procedures for the ProCut on-car brake lathe tool. Pay close attention as we describe these actions. They will save you time and money the next time you're required to turn a disc on a Mazda brake job. Be sure the vehicle is in neutral. Raise the vehicle on the lift so that the hub is about belt level. Check the wheel bearings for excessive play. Any play in the wheel bearings will complicate the operation of the lathe. Lug posts and wheel mounting surfaces on the rotor should be cleaned. In general, you want to make sure any rust is removed from all contacting surfaces. This will ensure solid mating of the hub, brake, and wheel components. Both caliper assemblies should be removed on the drive wheels and suspend them out of the way of moving parts like half shafts and CV boots. Before mounting the lathe, you should check the cutting bits. These bits play a vital role in delivering a high quality surface finish. It's important that they be original pro cut bits and properly mounted. Each tip has a life of 7 to 12 cuts per corner and should be rotated until all three corners have been used. Never flip the bits to cut on the opposite side. Only rotate them. Note that dots on the tip corners always face up. You can monitor the rotor surface finish to determine tip wear. If the rotor surface area starts to look inconsistent or feels rough to the touch, the cutting bits should be rotated or replaced. Throughout this program, I'll stop to review each section before we continue. Be sure the vehicle is in neutral and raise it until the hub is about belt level. Check for excessive bearing play and correct any hub irregularities. Remove the wheel and caliper. Clean all mating surfaces between the rotor, hub, and wheel. Check cutting bits. Mounting the machine. The Pro Cut mounts directly to the hub of the wheel at the center of the flange. As you can see, the cutting head of the brake lathe is to the right of the center flange. You can also mount the lathe on vehicles with a small wheel well by turning it in any position necessary to allow it to fit. You will want to begin with the lathe right side up with the cutting action in the place where the caliper is normally mounted. To mount the machine, first select the correct adapter for the Mazda vehicle you are servicing. Once you've selected the correct adapter, try each bolt pattern until you've found the one that fits the bolt pattern evenly. Using a hand wrench, secure the adapter evenly with either the vehicle's lug nuts or the nuts provided with the machine.
use a lug nut on every post. Be warned that adapters are not designed to withstand the use of impact tools, so do not use impact guns to attach these adapters. Roll the machine into place and attach it to the adapter. The lathe stand is spring-loaded to accommodate different heights. Each adapter has a dowel pin which must align with one of two holes in the mounting flange. Note, the dowel pin must be on the adapter. Do not mount the lathe to an adapter with a broken or missing pin. And rotate the machine so the cutting head is in position to cut where the caliper was mounted. Then, lock the machine in place by tightening the trolley handle. Once the flange is flush to the adapter, the shaft of the machine bolts onto the adapter by turning the large mounting knob. Position the lathe so the knob threads easily without binding. The cutting head must also be set. Loosen the knob on top and slide the head into position so it straddles the rotor. Retighten the knob on top to lock the head in position. Finally, be sure to bring the shutoff cam into position so the lathe will automatically shut down when the cutting head clears the rotor. Okay, let's review. Be sure to start with the lathe in the right side up position. Select the correct adapter and mount with a hand wrench. Do not use impact tools. Mount the lathe to the adapter. Center and secure the cutting head. Set the automatic shutoff cam so it will engage when the cutting head clears the rotor. Lateral runout adjustment. Compensating for runout is a very simple process. All extension cords must be at least 12 gauge and less than 25 feet in length. Do not use drop light extension cords. Once the machine is attached, all the technician needs to do is turn on the lathe and firmly press the start button. A series of clicking sounds will be heard when the lathe adjusts for runout. The lathe will adjust for a short time usually less than a minute. Actual runout in the lathe is shown live on the LED screen. The lathe will continue to adjust until it compensates runout to less than one one thousandth of an inch. After the adjustment is complete, the clicking will stop. The control panel of the lathe will light up with a status report, normally double green lights. The double green lights is confirmation that the runout has been compensated less than one thousandths of an inch. If the red try again light appears, remove the lathe from the adapter. Rotate the adapter 180 degrees and remount the lathe. If you find the red try again light continues to reappear, double check your setup. Often the brake lathe will be able to adjust the second time. Repeated failure to properly compensate for runout will indicate a problem with vehicle components like damaged bearings or a bent half shaft. These components must be serviced 
before turning rotors on the vehicle. Once runout has been compensated for, the machine is ready to make a cut. Notice you can still see some radial runout in the machine. This scrubbing motion is slightly different than lateral runout, which has been compensated for by the machine. This is caused by a slightly off-center adapter and is desirable since it forces the lathe to leave a non-directional surface finish on the rotor. This in turn reduces the chance of brake noise. Let's review. Double green light means it's okay to make a cut. If the lathe shows the red try again light, dismount the lathe, rotate the adapter 180 degrees, and try again. Repeated try again lights usually indicate some problem with the hub or axle that will need to be corrected before machining the rotor. Making the cut. Making a cut is a simple operation. Loosen the clamp knob on top of the cutting head to allow the cutting arms to spread. Visually check to see if the arms are wide enough to clear the rotor. If they are not, rotate the cut depth adjusting dial until they are. Then advance the head to the middle of the braking surface using the feed knob. Advance the backside cutting arm with the cut depth adjusting dial toward the rotor until it just skims the surface. Do the backside first because even though it's hard to see, you can still hear the sound of the cutting bit as it skims the surface. Then, advance the cutting arm on the front side of the rotor until it also touches the surface. On this side, you can see the cutting bit touch the rotor as well as hear it. This will be the base for which cut depth will be set. Then, use the feed knob and advance the head into the inner edge of the braking surface. It is absolutely critical that you do not advance the head too far and strike the hat of the rotor. Watch very carefully as you advance the head. Failure to do this will result in damage to the lathe. At the inner edge of the braking surface, Use the cut depth adjusting dial to set cutting depth. You can reset the adjusting dial to zero by pulling the spring-loaded knob out and rotating it to zero. Each line on the knob will advance the bit two and one half thousandths of an inch as marked. The machine can take up to 15 thousandths of an inch per side or 30 thousandths per rotor and still leave a finished cut surface. There is no need to make a second cut with the lathe. So cut depth should be set deep enough to ensure that all runout is taken in one pass. Once this is done, tighten the clamp knob on top of the cutting head and mount the disc silencer. There are two silencers that come with the machine. The regular silencers are used on vented discs and the double wide silencers are used for solid discs. This silencer is very important and should be used on every rotor to prevent vibration. It rides right on top of the tips as shown. To start the cutting pass, engage the feed clutch by pushing in the feed knob. The cut will take from two to four minutes depending on the size of the rotor.
when the cut is finished, the automatic shutoff will stop the machine. Before you remove the lathe, you need to clean the disc. Make sure you slide the cam stop away from the micro switch. Then, pull the knob out on the feed wheel. Next, you can turn on the machine to rotate the disc. While the disc is turning, Spray the disc with soapy water and wipe it clean with a paper towel. Be careful to avoid injury while cleaning the rotating rotor. Remove the silencer. Then, Dismount the brake lathe by simply unscrewing the main knob, being careful not to bump the rotor or the fender with the brake lathe. Next, remove the adapter from the hub to use it on the other side of the vehicle. After you remove the adapter, do not take the disc off the hubs. Remember, the disc has just been machined to match the position of the disc in relation to that side of the suspension. Secure the disc to the hub by tightening the lugs on the hub with a wrench. Now, let's review. Make a scratch cut to establish a baseline for depth of cut. Advance the cutting head to the inside edge of the rotor, being very careful that the cutting arms do not hit the hat. Hitting the hat will cause damage to the tool holder plate that will adversely affect lathe performance. Set cut depth so that all runout can be taken out of the rotor in one pass. Remember, the lathe can take up to 30 thousandths per pass. Cutting the opposite side. To cut the disc on the opposite side, first mount the adapter on the hub. To prepare the lathe for operation on the other side of the vehicle, loosen the trolley handle. Rotate the machine in the upside-down position. The procedure for cutting upside-down is just the same as right-side-up. However, since the cutting head has already been set to the cutting position, you will not need to move it. The lathe mounts in the same manner. Often the shutoff switch will be in the same position from the previous cut, so the machine will not turn on until you move the cutting head. The cutting arms will also be advanced in from the last cut, so be sure to loosen the clamp and spread the arms before advancing the head. Adjusting for runout is just the same as well. Just press the power button, then Press the start button. Move the cutting bits into the center of the rotor to set the cutting depth base just like the other side. Set the bits to just touch the surface on both sides of the rotor. This will achieve the cut depth base adjustment again, just like the other side. Then advance the cutting head toward the hat of the rotor. This requires even more care in the upside-down position. Do not bump the hat of the rotor with the cutting arms. Make your final cut depth adjustment and install the silencer clip as you did on the other side, only upside down. As you can see, the entire cutting process is just the same right down to the silencer clip.
OK, let's review. Be sure the cutoff switch is disengaged. All operations are the same in the upside down position. Lathe maintenance. The best way to ensure smooth operation of the ProCut brake lathe is to keep all parts as clean as possible. The cutting head itself should be cleaned by removing the dust shield and brush away all the shavings. Another area to clean is the flange area. Remove the flange guard and inspect the magnetic pickup. Clean the magnetic pickup from shavings and debris with a brush. Do not use any chemicals or compressed air. Reinstall the flange guard. Refer to the owner's manual for further details on maintenance adjustments or contact your local ProCut representative for additional service needs. Well, this concludes the setup, operation, and maintenance of the ProCut on-car brake lathe. By following these procedures, you'll be saving time and matching the rotor to the hub on which it turns, eliminating the root cause of pulsation. In doing so, you'll also be ensuring the safety and satisfaction of your customers. Zoom, zoom.